Hello, this is TJR. The Rolling Stones' Goat's Head Soup album was re-released this weekend with a brand new remix. It's available in multiple formats, including a single CD, two CD Deluxe Edition, and Super Deluxe CD Blu-ray and Super Deluxe Vinyl Editions that include hardcover books and other various goo This review will just concentrate on the 2020 remix, and during this review, I AB between the 2009 remaster and the new 2020 remix. But before we go further, if you like this type of content, please be sure to click like, click subscribe, and be sure to click the notification icon so you can know when I release new videos. Also, if you want to take that extra step, you can go to the Patreon page. Patron supporters receive early access to selected videos and exclusive Patreon content. Okay, let's get to it. My first revelation from listening to this new remix is the discovery that it was done by Giles Martin. Why is this a revelation? Well, leading up to this release, I could find no pre-release information that informed me of this. And it wasn't until I could actually read the re-release album credits that I learned that Giles Martin was listed as the mixer. I guess I should have followed his Twitter page because after finding his name in the credits, I also discovered that he did make mention of this back in August. But seriously, from a strictly publicity and marketing perspective, why wasn't more made of this in the advanced publicity leading up to this re-release? I know that there are some who really don't appreciate Giles Martin's remixes of Sgt. Pepper, The White Album, and Abbey Road. But from everything I can gather, it appears that most music fans, myself included, are overall pleased with the Giles Martin remixes. And it's one of those situations where the dissatisfied are just a lot louder on the internet than the satisfied. So how would I describe this remix? Subtle and careful, with some songs benefiting more from the remix than others. Although I don't feel that any of the tracks on Goat's Head Soup have been diminished by this remix, by and large. Unlike the Beatles remixes, there are no real startling moments And Giles Martin is extremely careful not to really change the original mix so much as to just add subtle tinges of clarity to the original instrument tracks. On the tracks Dancing with Mr. D and 100 Years, there was definitely more punch and separation to both the bass and the drums. I'm going to linger a bit on the track Coming Down Again, which is a personal favorite of mine off of this album. The mix is a bit airier. The bass feels like it's coming in from behind, and the guitars feel a bit more separated. But there are some very noticeable differences when I do a back-to-back on this one. There is an opening wah-wah guitar texture that is more present on the 09 remaster, and is subtly played down a bit on the remix. The good news is that you get to better appreciate the beauty of Nicky Hopkins' piano. But the bad news is that the guitar textures, while still audible, are played down a bit. Also, as I listened to this track, I noticed what I can only describe as a percussive scrape that at times felt on time, on the beat, and at other times a bit off during the song's chorus. This scrape sound surprised me, and I wondered if I was listening to a defective copy. I went back to the 2009 remaster, and I discovered that it was present there too, but a bit more buried in the mix in that version, so much so that it never really stood out to me until now. But now that I have heard it, I can't unhear it. Even though it is percussive, I'm not sure that this is something coming from Charlie Watts. It feels like it might be a guitar pick scrape that either Keith Richards or McTaylor might have hit against the strings in order to keep in time. Overall, Coming Down Again benefits quite nicely from this remix. However, This scrape sound, because it doesn't follow a steady rhythm structure, stands out like a bit of a sore thumb on this new mix. In fact, throughout this 2020 remix, it feels like the softer songs from Goat's Head Soup benefit more than its rockers do. Heartbreaker sounds a bit more aggressive, yes, and the bass does sound warmer too, but its softer moments feel like they could have benefited from the stronger track separation that I heard in Coming Down Again. However, I will say that the horn section is much cleaner sounding and more pronounced than on the previous 2009 version. And I want to use this moment to illustrate that your mileage might vary 
depending on your sound system. I heard a cleaner, less distorted horn section when listening on the speakers on my home system, but I could barely tell the difference listening on my car stereo. By far though, it's the classic track Angie that might get the most benefit out of this new remix. At first, you might not hear too much difference during its sparse introduction, but as the band kicks in, you begin to hear the benefits of this remix as all the instruments enjoy an additional amount of warmth, separation, and clarity. So far, Angie is the best reason to listen to this new remix. Of the album's rockers, Silver Train is probably the one that benefits the most, however, from this new remix. The song drives a bit more, and we get a fuller vocal chorus on the I Did Not Know Her Name section. The 2009 version now feels a lot more restrained since comparing it to this newer version. Speaking of restrained, both Hide Your Love and Winter also get to stretch out and also feel less restrained too. Both songs now feel a touch more epic and a little bit more powerful than they had previously. With the exception of Angie, it really does feel like Goat's Head Soup's lesser known tracks are the ones that benefit the most from this new remix. Under this new remix, Can You Hear the Music also benefits as it brings out more of the song's psychedelic leanings. Under Giles Martin's direction, this song feels more like what should have been one of the better tracks from their Satanic Majesty's request. Finally, the album's closer, Star Star, which, yes, I know, is the censored title. This track also feels less constrained, too. I bring this one up because I've always felt that this wasn't the strongest track to close Goat's Head Soup with. But the remix definitely helps improve its standing. It definitely kind of makes it rock just a little bit more. Overall, my reaction to this new remix is mostly positive. However, I still wonder if more couldn't have been done with Heartbreaker, perhaps one of the most popular tracks off this album. Perhaps I was just expecting too much. But I do wonder just how much time was Giles Martin given with these original session files? and if more could have been done with more time. I want to close by saying that the 2009 remaster still sounds really good, and the 2020 remix is very respectful of the album's original mix. It's not trying to reinvent the wheel, but it does want you to better appreciate the individual contributions made by each musician who played on it. This is TJR. Those are my thoughts. Please share yours. Let me know what you think in the comments. And by the way, if you are wondering what version did I pick up, well, I like this album a lot. In fact, I think I like this album a lot more than most Rolling Stones fans and critics do. But I don't think I like it quite enough to shell out $149 for the Super Deluxe CD version with Blu-ray. But perhaps I will be able to get a hold of it at a later time. I will be doing a second video where I discuss the bonus tracks, however, on the Deluxe 2 CD edition. So be looking for that video. I also have some additional Rolling Stones related video projects that I'm working on, so be watching out for that as well. I want to thank everybody for watching. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Take care. Bye bye. Uh, uh, uh.